significance of this venue is unprecedented. You, you can't go anywhere else in the world and replicate this. The nation's capital is a place where influence is peddled and change settled, typically within corridors of power. We all are striving for the same thing. We just want equality. But when the world witnessed an unspeakable death, a rising tide of outrage born from generations of racial injustice. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Stormed America's streets to secure a seat at history's table. We're seeing people that are pissed off, that they don't have jobs, that the American dream has failed them, that they aren't where they should be. Just the callousness at which this man was his life was brought to an end. It was shocking. It sh I think it shocked everyone, you know, into this conversation, no you know, into this reality. And now everyone can agree. Maybe there is a, a devaluation of black lives in this country. I mean, we, we need to look at that. This broad campaign for equality includes an explosion of expression on wood, glass, walls, and pavement, coursing through Washington, D.C., breathing new life and new meaning into how we see and solve injustice. Artists, you know, we have such a unique voice. You know, we have the ability to move people through word and image. This movement's roots were planted in Lafayette Square, steps from the White House. History is something you're a part of. It's nothing you plan for. Here, protest signs, drawn, scratched, and scribbled, line trees, poles, and fences. For Yolanda Wells, horror and beauty sit side by side. Even though this is a sad time for us, look at this. It is beautiful. All this art is beautiful. And it's causing everyone to come together. Yes, yeah, it's a select few who do not see what's happening and the meaning behind it. But for the ones that do, it's a beautiful thing. And right now, I'm just touching some things up. Color just tells the story, and it, it invokes so much, you know, emotion. Sonia Jones is among several artists working with the renowned Paints Institute creating world-class murals. Nina Simone said it, it's, you know, the responsibility of artists to reflect the times, and so I'm just happy to be able to be out here and do that. I am doing a portrait of a young man. They started in Chinatown and Gallery Place, turning riot-proof slabs of plywood protecting businesses. I want to focus on, like, skin tone and um, his expression. Into something extraordinary. Part of his shirt is going to have part of the Black Panthers Party logo. Another one is going to be a fist because that's a trademark that I'm doing. This transformation of motifs from war zone wood to a landscape of promise was the brainchild of the downtown D.C. Business Improvement District, the Paints Institute, and the property owner. The common theme is unity, togetherness, solidarity, and let's move forward. Oxford Properties General Manager Josh Turnbull witnessed the power of public art here and wanted more. I've got a building over at 16th and I Street, right in the heart of Black Lives Matter Plaza. We need to do this there. By the next morning, we had the artists over here, and here we are with now an outdoor art gallery. <laughs> This location where we are right now is 916th Street, and the street has been renamed Black Lives Matter Plaza. Different shades of brown to reflect brown people, black people, so they can see themselves in a rainbow. We're painting history right here. My name is Moses, Mozart Rivera, and we call this Brown Babes Are Magic. Just trying to give it a little bit of life. I try to use the same tones in both hands to show that we are more equal than we are different. Together we rise. As artists, we want to be a part of change, and this is a critical time, and, and to not take part, I think, is irresponsible. 
everybody has a gift, everybody has a way that they can tap in to kind of bring about real change. And she's just trying to channel that inner energy to do that. My name is Levi Robinson. Uh, this piece is called Black Lives Matter to a Medic. When riot police cleared protesters on that now infamous afternoon, <laughs> medics were stationed on this very spot, this very piece of plywood, their triage rundown. Supply lists, first aid kits, dates and times of when protesters were marching. You know, that's why a lot of the wood is still exposed in the piece. I didn't want to paint over that. You know, I wanted to preserve it because I felt like it's, it told their story. This is my way of marching, you know. Our final stop, the entire block of 14th and V Streets. Where Denver Terrence carefully amid an ongoing construction project built with dozens of volunteers and owed to black lives lost to racial injustice and police brutality. More than 100 names, some familiar, others not, including Terrence's uncle, Denver Smith, a college student gunned down during a peaceful protest at Southern University in 1972. This wall is about information, um, it's about hope, but it's also about pain, um, and hopefully with Acknowledging the pain, we can move towards some type of solution. Hey, Denver, can you give me some yellow? It felt very heavy going down this mural, knowing that the police killed all these people and they are hired to protect us. Although some of the names were familiar, it's almost like the wall grabs you. After the wall touched me, I, I, I tried to leave the wall here versus taking the wall with me. For some, it's hard to carry around a baggage of intolerance, filled with disappointment, rage, and loss. But this explosion of expression is about more than the injustices of yesterday. These murals, as they march through our nation's capital, remind us that we can move forward. I think humans have evolved enough where we can look past something so trivial as race, color, to determine whether or not a person deserves to live. I'm Jay Corp. You know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. That's all we can be at this point is hopeful, right? I'm hopeful. For ABC 7 News.